Well, good day and welcome back to the Shepherd's Word Church again. We had a little problem with the camera there, and, and uh, so we're starting again because it's very important that, that, that we record these teachings. We, we hope the teachings will be there longer than, than we will be for those who truly want to know what does God's Word actually say. So, but again, the most important thing is welcome back to this t uh, teaching of our shepherd's word, this study, this beautiful love letter that our Heavenly Father has given to us. And, and as we go into this study, um, we've, we've asked the Lord's blessings to, to open eyes, open ears, and, and to teach us his word. We, we don't want the uh, words of men, we want God's word. He is our great teacher. So we are in that uh, season uh, when the uh, teachings of the Passover are so very important. The the holy days that God Himself appointed to us, because men have appointed their own holy days, and they actually begin to appoint their own, own holy days, even even in the beginning, uh, as we've we've talked about the uh, those uh, tablets that that were found in that in that great uh, library that where the writings uh, of Cain had been kept, that when he uh, began the teaching of that resurrection uh, by Easter of the goddess or the god Tammuz. And so there, there's always been that opposition, that, that attack on truth. But as we're in this season and we're approaching the uh, actual date of the Passover that we're supposed to celebrate and keep and remember forever. And as I had said in Exodus chapter 12, the Lord does say, this is the Lord's Passover. In other words, I'm teaching you about the Passover. He said, you will do this and keep this. Remember this forever, Olam, through all eternity. But there have been those false teachers that have said that, uh, no, we no longer keep the Passover, it's done away with. But that's not what the Lord teaches us. That is that is just an attack on truth. And so today we're uh, going to be looking at the questions of the Last Supper, and I have a question mark, or the Lord's Supper, question mark, or the Passover. Because as many have removed the Passover, the teaching of Christ became our Passover and have replaced it with the uh, corrupted teachings that begin with Cain and Easter and Tammuz and corrupted even in the churches today that uh, they will not even recognize that this is the time that we're approaching is the Passover. They'll say, no, we... We celebrate the resurrection, but the question is, which resurrection? You put the name of the resurrection on another God, and you use the date of another God. And so as we look at these questions, I'm also going to try to include some dates. So as the, as the Bible is very clear about giving us dates and the uh, new year, as God had said, the first day of the first month, that is that spring equinox. So, uh, and then we count 15 days from that uh, for the true Passover, where men today are using moons, and that's, that's Satan's calendar. But uh, let's, uh, let's begin with the, the Word of God. And as I said, we've already asked the Lord's blessing on this to be with us. So we're going to begin with... Uh, the book of John, and I'm going to start with chapter 12, and we're going to uh, work our way through verses 1 through 19. Now, this day that we're looking at here, what the Bible's referring to, is would be equal to Abib the uh, tenth. And also in, in part of it, well, I'll show you where the day changes, it becomes Abib the 11th. Now it's also known as Nisan, which is the Babylonian name of that time of the month. And, and of course, uh, the Lord actually numbered those uh, renewing of time. So when you say month, that's actually not a correct word. It's, it's Chodesh, and it means a new a renewing of time 
And of course, it's set by the stars, not by the moons. It's, we are children of light, children of days. Satan's calendar, he uses the, the <clears throat> excuse me, the, the uh, uh, calendar of darkness by moons. So let's begin with uh, John chapter 12, verse 1. Then Jesus, <clears throat> excuse me again, then Jesus, six days before the Passover, and so the, the uh, Passover, as, as I had said, it actually the true Passover is, begins at 6 p.m. Um, that, that brings you to the 15th. So six days before, this is the 10th. And Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. And so, as I said, this is that tenth of Abib that, as the Bible tells us, six days before the Passover. And as we go into this, you'll see that the, the Passover that he teaches us will actually, uh, where he teaches us the, uh, the bread and the wine, now that's actually the, the first night. That's not at the actual Passover itself. It's part of the Passover, but it's the first night of the unleavened bread. And so this, this being the tenth. And now, and when we go to verse 3, um, we, uh, we, we actually have uh, a change of day, I believe. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? Then he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. So uh, Judas uh, being a thief, but he loved carrying the money bag. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my bearing has she kept this. For the poor you, poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. And uh, that, that was not, actually I said verse 3, that was not the change of day. We're coming to it. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that by reason of him many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. So this being Abib the tenth, and of course, as we learned in Exodus chapter 12, that that is the day that you choose the lamb that is going to die. So on this, we see that they have chosen Christ to die, but they want to put Lazarus to death also. So on that 10th tenth, tenth day, in perfect timing, just as God had taught us way back in Exodus and in that time of Moses how the calendar would lay out and so God's calendar is perfect we use a corrupt calendar today but God's is perfect so now on then it says on verse 12 on the next day so that that would be a beeb or some people may want to say the 11th on the next day much people that were come to the feast when they had heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried Hosanna blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord and Jesus when he had found a young ass sat thereon as it is written fear not daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh, sitting on an ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, they remembered that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. So these were in the prophecies that exactly how it, it would unfold, and it did, detail by detail. The people, therefore, that was with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave 
and raised him from the dead bear record. So they were telling everybody about all these great things that they had seen. For this cause the people also met him, for that they heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail nothing. Behold, the world is gone after him. And, uh, but they have chosen him to die, uh, he, that, he, he being that perfect lamb. Now I want to turn to the book of uh, Mark. And uh, we're going to uh, go to chapter 11. And uh, we're going to uh, pick it up with, with verse 12. Now, um, this, um, this would actually um, be, we're going to cover, uh, again, a part of Abib the, uh, the 11th and Abib the 12th. Um, and uh, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm actually going to back up, and we, we won't have it on the board, I'm going to back up with with uh, verse 11 and Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple and when he had looked around about all things and now the eventide was come he went out unto Bethany with the twelve and on the morrow when they were come from Bethany he was hungry so this is uh, Abib or Nisan the twelve and seeing a fig tree afar far off having leaves he came if happily he might find anything thereon and when he came to it he found nothing but leaves for the time of figs was not yet and so all that this what this part that he's teaching this is uh just uh just before just prior to the, the passover which the, the the 14th is actually when he will be crucified the 15th is when he will be in the tomb and this is this is the 12 and the jews answered and said unto it no man eat fruit I'm sorry, and Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever, and his disciples heard it. Now this is has a teaching that that old guard of the corrupted uh, 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 priest line, it would be replaced, that this would be the end of it, These this the trees that, that bear no good fruit. And they came to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Now, of course, this is the second uh, cleansing of the temple. We had seen that when he first began his ministry, he had cleansed the temple. And this is uh, the second uh, cleansing. And he would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple and he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And of course he is quoting that prof prophecy that, that he had shared with us. And the scribes and chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him because all the people was astonished at his doctrine. So they are being put out of business. And the people are turning to the Lord. And when evening was come, he went out of the city. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Now mountains represent kingdoms, because that kingdom that is on this earth today is that kingdom that uh, Satan, he is the prince of this world. And as we saw that uh, many would sit in the uh, kingdom of heaven with Abraham, with our Lord, with our heavenly father, but those of this kingdom, they shall be cast into the fire. But so this mountain, this mountain, this kingdom shall say unto this kingdom, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which ye, 
he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he saith. And so as we enter into these last days and we can see that those that last kingdom coming to order, coming to pass, that the uh, we're in that uh, uh, sixth kingdom of Satan now and, and the seventh, uh, uh, he is... Uh, building it will it will come to pass in just a few short years but uh we will prevail so he's saying have faith that we will this this kingdom will be overthrown the kingdom of heaven will come to pass and that that one will be done away with therefore i say unto you what things soever you desire when you pray believe that you receive them and you shall have them so keep the faith in these last days when we see so much coming about, uh, so much wickedness and evil, and it, and it looks like the enemy's winning. No, that, that mountain, that kingdom will be overthrown and forever done away with. So let's, uh, let's go now to Matthew chapter 26. Chapter 26, and we'll begin with verse, uh, uh, verse 1. And we're going to read through seven. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these things, he said unto his disciples, You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. So he gives us the date there. That's Abib the 13th, because after two days, that would be the 15th. So he gives us that perfect date. Then, then assembled together the chief priests and scribes and elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and consulted that they might take Jesus by subtlety and kill him. So they'd already chosen him to die, but now they're trying to put together the plan. How are we going to do it? But they said, not on the feast day. And that means not on the 15th. Uh, we, we can't do it that day lest there be an uproar among the people. But they would get it done on the 14th. So, but they're saying we can't do it then, so we've got to get it done before somehow. Now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. So... We, uh, we see that he's uh, being prepared to be crucified and uh, enter into the tomb. Let's, uh, let's go to Mark chapter 14. And we're going to read verses uh, 10 through 17. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. Now, this, um, th this is leading us right up to uh, Abib the 14th. And when they had heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought how he might co conveniently betray him, betray the Lord. 12, and the first day of unleavened bread when they killed the Passover, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? And of course, uh, I want you to pay attention that it's always this, this meal that, uh, that they're going to have is always called the Passover by the Lord. Now the powers that be that have tried to remove the Passover that this is where uh, you see and in, in, uh, actually even I think as, uh, uh, as early as probably the time of Constantine and I'm, I'm sure it was that because they wanted to remove the Passover they actually even removed the name of it and they begin to call it the things like the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper and so that was part of the plan to get rid of these words, the Passover. And as you know, the others have noticed that they, they call it the Last Supper. That name was applied. But uh, in a sense, I mean, you could say it was the First Supper because it was the first time that Christ had showed us how to 
keep the Passover in the manner that because we no longer have to shed that blood, the, the lamb no longer has to be crucified because he was that perfect lamb that fulfilled all blood sacrifices done away with, done, done away forever. And so, um, so Judas, he had, he had gone uh, while it was still the, the 13th and made his deal. But as this says, the, the first day of unleavened bread when they killed the Passover. So that's the, that's the 14th of Abib because you have to remember that the day starts at 6 p.m. So that's at 6 p.m. That's the first hour of the night. You have 12 hours of the night and you have 12 hours of the day and like 6 a.m. that's the first hour of the day but the as, as we'll see that uh, the Christ would take the this Passover meal which is actually it was the first night of unleavened bread so it's not actually the true Passover uh, but it was just like in uh, in book of Exodus that they had prepared before the 15th it was on the 15th that the death angel passed over so they are they're preparing for this but this is that first first night but uh, the lamb has not been killed yet because the lamb is not killed that night when the day begins and I've, I've mentioned before that our days begin in darkness and we come to light. How? By this word. That's why God shows us that we begin in darkness, but we are taught his word and we become more Christ-like. But the lamb was to be killed in the afternoon the following day. It's still the 14th. So it is the day, as it says, it's the day that the lamb... Uh, when they killed the Passover, they killed the Passover lamb. So it would be that same day, but this day starts at 6 p.m. They would have the uh, the uh, Passover meal, and uh, he would then he would be uh, taken, arrested, and crucified. And just as the lamb, it says it says in the evening, but it means the late latter part of the afternoon that you're to kill the lamb. As we'll see, it perfect timing. 3, 3 p.m. when Christ would, would give up the ghost. So the first day of unleavened bread, when they killed the Passover, so he's telling us what day this is, his disciples said unto him, Where wilt thou that we go and prepare that thou mayest eat the Passover? And he sendeth forth his two of his disciples and saith unto them, Go ye into the city, and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water, follow him and of course uh it was very it would be very uncommon to see a man carrying a pitcher of water this was always what you saw the the women do they would they would use a pitcher and go to the well and so he stood out they would recognize right away and who wheresoever he shall go wherever he shall go in say ye to the good man of the house the master saith where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? So again, always remember, this is never in God's word. It does not exist, these words, the Last Supper, or, or referring to this as the Lord's Supper. Now, we will find the word the Lord's Supper, but it does not refer to this time. But I'll show you that. And he will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared. There make ready for us. And his disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. So as I said, you'll never see these words. He, they made ready the last supper or the first supper or anything else. It's the Passover. But churches today do not want to allow that to come into their house. And in the evening, he cometh with the twelve. And of course, that, that, that means that uh, the day has changed after 6 p.m. It is the 14th. He cometh with the twelve. <clears throat> Let's see what, where I wanted to go with this, how far I wanted to go. Um, okay, let's... Uh, Let's go to, actually, I, at this point, I want to show you in the um, Strong's uh, Concordance, I want to show you 
uh, the, so, some of the words that, that we're going to be encountering as we will be going uh, to Luke. I want to go ahead and show you those, those in advance. And uh, I think Jim's probably got those, got those for us. And, and it's to, we're going to be encountering the Greek word heresy. And um, the, uh, the, the r- true root that, that this word begins with, it's, root, it's uh, word number 142, and it's ai ro. And it is a, a primitive verb, and it means to, to lift by implication, to take up or away. So figuratively, to raise the voice, to keep in suspense of the mind, to sail away, to weigh anchor, and we can uh, ex- ex- expatiate sin. And you can see it's translated in the, in the King James as a way with bear up, carry, lift up, loose, make to doubt, put away, remove, take away, up. And so what this, this is the root of, of heresy. And so what a heresy is, you'll see that you, you're going to offer something in place of something and have a choice so that you can remove the other. In other words, uh, t- take people off the true path. Let's go to Hahi um, Ream Ahi, and uh, this is word uh, number one thirty-eight. And because the true word we're going to be looking at is uh, one thirty-nine, but I, I want you to see the true understanding. It uh, to take for oneself, as in to prefer, prefer to choose. And so, as I had said, so. If you want to remove something, you're going to give the person a choice and they can choose. You can choose God's word or you can choose something religious that some other man has offered to you. But it's it's your choice. So let's go to um, word number 139. And this is a word that we will we will see Paul use. And it's a, a heresies. And it, it is from word number 138, the word we just, just looked at. So properly a choice, a, uh, a disunion, a heresy. So it, it is, as I said, Paul's going to address this because there's going to be those in the church that are adding, bringing in a new religious act that he says, you don't want to do that. You, but... They're given a choice, but that's how the Passover was removed. It was replaced with something else. And it, as, we, as we know that Constantine replaced it with, with Easter, that he said that that Passover thing, that's just an old Jewish holiday. You don't want that. And uh, did away with it and gave them a choice to choose something new. And of course, that uh, being Easter, but there again, the Passover meal, no longer called a Passover meal. You know, some people today say, was it a Seder or something? No, it was the Passover. It was Christ teaching us how to continue to keep the Passover forever after that perfect lamb had been killed. And um, I want to go ahead and look at uh, word number 140. Ha idzo. And it's a derivative of 138, to make a choice or to choose. Now, uh, I don't think I, uh, we're, we're going to uh, have, have this one. Uh, actually, we might, the Webster's, uh, the, the word heresy. Uh, Jim may have that one for us, too. But heresy, um, from uh, a school of thought, uh, hect, uh, I mean a sect, a taking selection, school, sect, uh, to take uh, the first, uh, a religious belief opposed to the orthodox doctrines of a church, especially such a belief specifically denounced by the church, the rejection of a belief that is part of a church dogma. Now, of course, in the case that we're going to see, it's not the... Uh, refusing the church dogma it's actually uh, what Paul's going to show us is we're accepting uh, we're ex- uh, we're uh, refusing Christ's words and accepting a new church dogma instead so as, as we continue with this 
any opinion in philosophy, politics, etc., opposed to official or established views or doctrines, the holding of any such belief or opinion. And I'm going to go ahead and look at the word heretic. Uh, the, um, it says, uh, to being able to choose, uh, to take, to choose a person who professes a heresy, a church member who holds beliefs opposed to church dogma. But again, in this case, it's they hold to a church dogma, but refuse the word of God, that dogma. And her her heretical a, of heresy or heretics containing, characterized by, or having nature of heresy. And so as we go to um, the book of Luke and uh, chapter um, 22 and verses, let's see, Luke, yeah, chapter 22, we're, we're going to uh, see some of, of some of these these words, and there was uh, one other word that we're that we're going to to see here that I I didn't have Jim give it to you, but we let's read now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. So this is the beginning of Passover. Actually, begins with that first night of of, of that feast of unleavened bread. And many, many teachers don't know that. They just haven't studied God's word and don't understand it. And we're going to read uh, through all the way through verse 20. And the chief priest and scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, uh, surnamed Iscariot, being of the number of the twelve, one of the original twelve uh, disciples and apostles. And he went his way and communed with the chief priests and captains how he might betray him unto them. And they were glad and covenanted to give him money. And he promised and sought opportunity to betray him unto them in the absence of the multitude. So snuck away and secretly made the deal. Seven, then came the day of unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed. And again, as I said, that starts at 6 p.m. That's the beginning of the day. So when that day comes, it's it's a uh, you're approaching nightfall. And he and he sent Peter and John, saying, "Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat." And they said unto him, "Where wilt thou that we prepare?" And he said unto them, "Behold, when ye entered into the city, there shall be a man to meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him in the house where he entereth." And you shall say unto the good man of the house, The master saith unto thee, Where is the guest chamber? Where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. Always called the Passover, never the, the uh, Last Supper or Lord's Supper. And he shall show you a large room furnished. There make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down, and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire, I have desired to, desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Because he wanted to teach them how to keep the Passover. If you do as a Christian don't know how to keep the Passover, Christ lays it out for us here. It's not a it's not a Jewish seder. It's a it's a not a doing away with it and and celebrating the resurrection because the resurrection did not give us take away the sins of the world. That as we will learn in next week's teaching, that that was given to us for our faith. That's that's what it was for, not for our salvation, but for our faith. He says, "For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until I be fulfilled." in the kingdom of God. So he was going to, uh, and, and what he's saying, that he would no longer keep the Passover. Now he did have meals with the, with the, the apostles after this, he, after he was resurrected. We know of several occasions where he did eat with them. He had a supper with them, but not the Passover. So that won't be, but it will be celebrated and kept forever through all eternity, even in heaven. And he took the cup and, and, and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. 
For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it. And of course, breaking the bread and that's, that's uh, that breaking of that body represents that his body would be broken. And of course, as I've taught, the, the taking of that bread, that is like consuming the word of God and remembering who that word of God is. It is Christ, that word that became flesh. So we consume that word of God and become one with Christ. He said, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. <clears throat> now, so we do in, in find the translation into the word, word supper here, but it is the... Uh, Greek word uh, uh, deep deep known, and spelled but it would be kind of like our D I P E N O N, and it's uh, from the same as eleven sixty, and it just simply means a meal, a dinner, and it uh, it can be referred to as the chief meal, the feast, <clears throat> the Passover feast, and but it's it's translated as supper, but when it says, actually in the Greek, when they had finished the meal, which meal? The Passover meal. None other. Not a first supper, not a last supper, not a, not a Lord's supper, but the Passover meal. So let's, uh, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians And we'll see the continued uh, teachings. And First uh, Corinthians, and uh, let's look at uh, chapter five, verses four through eight. Paul writing, he says, "In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together, and my spirit, <clears throat> excuse me, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such as one unto Satan." for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of our Lord Jesus. So he had, he had been talking about that there had some in the church that had entered into the sin, and sometimes you just have to turn them over to the devil and let him have his way with them. And of course, they, in time, they will come seeking the Lord. He said, um, your glory is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So this is talking about how with the Passover, we want to remove all leaven. Leaven represents sin. You let a little bit get into the house, a little bit of sin, and it's just going to blossom and grow and corrupt the whole loaf. So, so that's when he says to remove the leaven from the house. He's talking about sin. Be very careful at this, uh, this time of this highest holy day of Christianity, uh, the Passover. Remove all sin. Be, be aware of it. Uh, the devil's uh, wanting to corrupt you. Purge out therefore the old leaven that you may be a new lump as you are unleavened for even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Christ is our Passover lamb. That's exactly what he's saying. So remove that leaven, remove that sin, and those false teachings. Stick to the word of God. He said, therefore, let us keep the feast. Which feast? The Passover feast. Not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. So don't let anything come in and corrupt it. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. This pure word of God. Stick to this. You know, I've um, seen where many um, uh, pastors that... Uh, were before my time there was one I mean I think I was a even as a, a youngster uh, up time I was a young man I, I would see him on television and um, uh, I think he, was a, he had the worldwide church of uh, Christ I think it was called George Herbert Armstrong and when he first become a preacher I read 
that uh, he taught against keeping the Passover. He said, no, we no longer keep the Passover because he had been influenced by uh, going to the Bible colleges where they teach that to remove the Passover, we no longer keep it. And in time, he became quite a scholar and he changed that teaching and he said, no, we definitely do keep the Passover. We keep it forever. So in time, as he, uh, he got out of school and then began to learn on his own, he realized, no, we are supposed to keep the Passover forever. And so it is, uh, uh, you, you cannot listen to man's words. You got to go to the word of God. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I want to read uh, verses 18 through 26. <clears throat> now, uh, Paul again uh, teaching. He says, For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. And uh, so what, what he's saying, he said, uh, I believe that there is a part of the assembly, a part of the church that are bringing in divisions. And this is those heresies as we're going to see. They're offering something new that is not the word of God. He said, for there must be heresies among you that they which are approved may be manifest among you. He said um, that he said, uh, you have there among you those that are offering to you other options. That's what he's, when he says those heresies, they're offering to you some other options besides the word of God. And he said, uh, they're offering other options than the established word of God. They bring it in. He said, I'm afraid that you're going to accept it as doctrine. And of course the world has. Look, attend any church you want uh, during this time as they celebrate uh, Easter, they refuse to pass over. They say, no, we'll, we'll call it Resurrection Day. They don't want to say Passover. We'll call it Resurrection Day. But the divisions that they have brought in, also this, this taking of the bread and wine, they will not call it the Passover meal. They will again call it the Last Supper or the Lord's Supper. So the divisions had been brought in even at this time that there were those Satan's on the ball he likes to corrupt the word of God give you a choice to take you off the right track so let's continue he said uh, when you come together theref therefore into one place this is not to eat the Lord's Supper so this is not to have this new uh, uh, holy day that you're that you're calling eat, eating the lord's supper and of course it was something that they were doing at every church service he said that's that we don't have that in the word of god for in eating everyone taketh before other his own supper and one is hungry and another is drunken so uh bringing bringing in heresies choices and corrupting the church even with drunkenness and uh making a party out of it what have you not houses to eat and to drink in or despise ye the church of god and shame them that have not so don't don't bring that in and bring shame to others that, that don't have what you have what shall i say to you shall i praise you in this i praise you not noah he wants to correct this problem for i have received of the lord that which I also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And of course, he was showing us how to do it, is what Paul is saying. The Lord showed you. He took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, representing his broken body, broken for us, and said, Take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me he who we just read christ became our passover do this in remembering that christ became our passover after the same manner also he took the cup which he had supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood and a testament it's your you have a last will and testament and, and of course, the New Testament follows perfectly with the Old Testament. It's, it's just that you, 
Uh, you know, a lot of people have two copies of their last will and testament. The Lord gave us two copies too. We're double witness. We know exactly what the Lord wants us to do. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So keep this as we're, as the Lord says forever. 26, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Did he say you show the Lord's resurrection? No, this is not about the celebrating resurrection. This is about uh, remembering that the Lord died for us, became that Passover lamb, laid down his life to take away the sins of the world. You're not to do this in remembrance of his resurrection. You're to do this in remembrance that he died for us. He became that Passover lamb. So um, I want to uh, show you where there is a Lord's Supper. So let's, let's turn to Revelation chapter 19. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to read verses uh, 17 through 21. Now this is right at that, right, what this is taking us to, that great battle of Armageddon when all the enemies of the Lord will be destroyed. All wickedness will be destroyed. All those great armies that stand against him will be destroyed. And he said, John said, and I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven. Now who, who's he calling? The vultures. Not just birds. These are vultures that eat the dead bodies. Come and gather yourself together unto the supper of the great God. So this is, this is that, that supper of the Lord. So we don't want to celebrate a supper of the, of the Lord. We don't want to be there. You don't want to be part of this. That you may eat the flesh of kings. Let these vultures eat their flesh bodies and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men, all those that take part in that great army, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And so, yeah, you don't want to be a part of that Lord's Supper, that great feast, of the destruction of those of all his enemies but there is one that we do want to take and of course we must keep the passover if we want to if we want to be there remember who the true christ is let's look at revelation 19 verses 7 through 9 <clears throat> and let's read uh, I'm going to read a, a, just the last sentence of, of verse 6. Um, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to, unto him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. So this is that great wedding, that great marriage supper or, or great feast. As, and it's the same word that, that I had showed you there that uh, is translated as supper. It's uh, that meal. So that great wedding feast that... That is the one that we want to go to, but you do not go to it if you do not know that Christ became your Passover, your, your lamb, that lamb that took away your sins. So as we continue in these days, uh, on the next study, I'm, I'm going to uh, make it uh, very clear how the days unfold and even the last hours, uh, how they unfold uh, when uh, Christ was nailed to the cross so detail by detail so that you have a, a clear understanding of it and even uh, the days that he he spent three and a half days in in that tomb and I'll, I'll, I'll lay that out for you so you have a good understanding of it 
and exactly when it was uh, when he arose and when uh, when the when the uh, ladies came to uh, to anoint him and found that he was already risen. So as we continue in this time, be aware of those that great evil that has come about the world to remove Christ as your Passover. Don't let them take it away from you. Keep that Passover. As I said, it will be the one thing that we remember forever through all eternity. So let's give thanks to our Heavenly Father for His Word. Our Heavenly Father, we truly do love you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you are our great teacher, that you have given us this beautiful love letter that teaches us all things. And Father, we pray that this word would go out to those who want to know more about what does your word actually say, that you would bless them, Lord, opening eyes, opening ears, giving understanding. Bless each and every one, Lord, and those that that need healings, Lord, you know who they are, and those who have family problems, Lord, you've heard their prayer. We ask, Lord, that you bless them, be with them. And for those who are still suffering from the pain of losing loved ones, Lord, give them a healing. Help them to see that, that uh, their loved ones are truly with you, Lord, and they are blessed, truly have made, finished this, this time of trouble that we suffer in this flesh, and they're now with you, Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've shown us. And Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the honor and all the glory. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen.